And hello, everybody, my friends from around the world. It is so good to be with you. I know I have neglected you all in the uh, with the live streams. It has been a rush to uh, 2021. Has been a little been. It's been great. It's been great. I've been busy. I've been super busy. So some of the cool things that I have going is I now have my own awards competition. So it's called the American uh, Spirits Council of Tasters, otherwise known as the Ascots. And if you if you are a brand and you enter, uh, you have a chance to win uh, one of these bad boys. So this is uh, my YouTube channel and all these all the tastings that I do. Those are basically I receive like media samples and and I write about. This is an actual competition where some of the best tasters in the world are on the panels with me and they taste and um, and we decide who is the best. And I will tell you, the entries are coming in fast and the comp for a first year competition. I am absolutely ecstatic. I can't wait for uh, the ascots to be revealed. So as you may notice, if this is uh, you've been following, you've been on the channel uh, before, we have new lighting in the house, folks. So. Uh, a big shout out to Rebecca Dow and her team for uh, helping me out with that, helping me out with uh, getting this light, you know, set up in the studio. And, you know, some of the nice video work that you've been seeing on the channel has been done by Rebecca. Um, I'm very, very fortunate that I was able to hire such a talented videographer to to work with me. I am so excited about the things that she brings to the table. I'm telling you, she is going to help bring this channel to that next level. And this lighting is just one example. Um, I So let's, um, let's get to telling you what tonight is all about. Now, if this is your first time coming to uh, the channel for a, a, a live stream, go ahead and click subscribe because we have great live streams all the time. I also drop videos throughout the week and drop celebrity interviews with the likes of Ludacris and Mick Fleetwood and Killer Mike. So you will not regret becoming a subscriber to that channel. Also, this and this, I think this is actually our first live stream of 2021. I don't think I have, uh, if I, I don't think I have done a live stream in, uh, in the year yet, uh, with the exception of, maybe of a uh, of a members only live stream, um, yeah. And we see uh, we see some. I see the comments coming in. Uh, Doug Pendleton says, "Fred, you need to touch more light because we can't see the ascot." Well, here you go, Doug. I think you can see it there. You know, that's one of the things that you know my my setup. My wife Jacqueline, she's like, "You got to get rid of the big mic because it." it um it hides your ascot and i'm like i love this mic i like the kind of radio setup so we'll we'll figure out some kind of um we'll figure out some kind of solution doug so you can see my ascot i think that's very kind of you uh, to point that out now if you haven't yet click the click the like button uh help me get to like 500 likes tonight that's going to be my goal uh the last time i put out a goal for the amount of likes it it helped me uh, go to, you know, get like a, a thousand likes, uh, you know, within a day. So uh, it's something new I'm trying here. And it helps with the algorithms. It helps with um, it helps with uh, all that stuff. Now, Cameron points out that Mash and Minnick was a live stream. That's right. That was a live stream. That was a live stream. So I have done a live stream already this year. Man, I'll tell you what. I guess so. This is my first. I guess what I was thinking here is that this is. Uh, uh, I was uh, thinking that you know this is my first like live stream tasting that I've done. So yeah. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and jump into how this is going to work. Keep answering. Um, uh, keep keep asking those questions. I will be looking in the chat. And uh, chatting with you, you know, throughout the night. Now, if you happen to catch this on replay, I will have the 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 slots, time slots where each one of these are tasted, and uh, we'll also have where like the results are. So if you want to skip ahead, 
is um, I will tell you that feel free to do it, but you will see it. You will find the you will find the chapters in the description. Also, and the after party, uh, we and the members only after party. We're gonna go ahead and have a call-in show. So and I know it's. Uh, I had an early morning appointment tomorrow. It got canceled on me. So I am all about. Um, I'm all about having an after party with the members. So we're gonna have a call-in show like the old days. So if you're not a member, click the join button and uh, become a member. Also, tonight is also a. Uh, you know, super chat. So if you if you have a dollar or five dollars that you want to put toward the channel, it all goes to booze. So feel free to to put a little action in there, and uh, I can guarantee you I will pro I will buy bourbon with it. So how this works? I don't know what I'm tasting. Uh, my director of operations, Allison, writes on a card of blind tasting. Uh, and uh, when I'm done tasting, I will open that up and figure out what they are. As we're going, I write notes in my little notebook. And um, and I taste, I pour out of these little 50 milliliter bottles. One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, it's really that simple. And here are the contenders for tonight. Uh, rare breed. This uh, came in as a contender. So basically, the, the tonight's show is is arced around this bottle, the latest Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof A121, and this bottle, Larceny uh, Barrel Proof A121, as well as a cash strength, uh, a cash strength Woodenville that I picked up. This is uh, 120 proof, uh, and that's coming out of Washington. Woodenville has done very well for me in my past blind tastings. So those three new releases are basically, you know, the core of the of that uh, of this tasting. So what I did was is I put some contenders in there. And if you know my palate, if you've been following this channel and watching me do my live tastings, you know, Rare Breed kicks a lot of butt in in my live streams. Rare Breed, Rare Breed beat the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection in a tasting. And you can... Um, uh, you can always count on Rare Breed being awesome. Uh, Dini gives me a, a, a super chat. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, she says, uh, super chat for a super dude. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I kind of kind of get in my hair, you know, to, to the point where it's like the dude off the Big Lebowski. So I'm kind of I'm going in that direction. And, you know, my, my hair may just match his at the at, at the end of the 2021. But I will not be drinking uh, vodkas like he did the White Russians. Uh, also up, this is a, a Weller, Weller Full Proof Barrel Pick by Kroger. You know, Kroger is one of the best places in Kentucky to get barrel picks. Uh, my good friend Chris Blanford does a great job. I've actually picked barrels with Chris before. Uh, you can on this channel, you can search my peerless barrel pick when we were picking barrels for uh, bourbon and beyond. You know, Kroger was our retail partner for bourbon and beyond. And, you know, Chris has a really great palate and he is fun to taste with. Uh, so that one will be interesting to see how it fares. And then I have a five year old scout, five year old old scout from Smooth Ambler. Now, this is actually MGP. So this is five year old Indiana bourbon. And I saw uh, I, I saw in my Instagram page uh, somebody commented that um, that there is like this this bottle has no chance. Never sleep on five year old uh, cash strength Indiana bourbon. Never ever ever sleep on it. That stuff is ac absolutely very good. Now here's one. This is one where a lot of people think that. Uh, um, that it stands a real shot, a real shot. And that's the Maker's Mark cast strength. Uh, Zach Pettit writes, uh, pair of character jumping up and down, saying number one fan. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you very much. So here we go with uh, the Maker's cast strength. We'll see where that stands. 
Now, this um, this was a nomination from from the membership in terms of uh, what I would pit against the uh, Elijah Craig, and that is Booker's. This happens to be the only bottle of Booker's that I had, and it's the 2020-2, uh, and, uh, and you know, if you may recall that this one was up for, um, this was in my Best American Whiskey of 2020 taste off in the bourbon category. So uh, this did very, very well. So I have really, really, really liked it. Now, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is a 12-year-old cast strength. Uh, this is going to be coming in at 123.6 proof. The Larceny is coming in at 114.8 proof. And you can find the you can find the uh, proof points and the um, um, you can find the proof points in the description. So go in the description and you'll find that. Uh, hey, water, whatever we are, by the way, it's a great band. They're on the rise. They actually they actually play the uh, the slide guitar with a bottle of bourbon. You can go to their uh, Instagram page and check that out. Uh, they're saying, uh, love the setup. Is there a reason you chose Maker's Cash Drink over the other Cash Drink offerings like 46 or Limited Series Cash Drink? Yes, I don't like putting uh, barrel finishes, which is what 46 is, in a in a lineup against basically you know traditionally straight bourbon. Not a fan of doing that whatsoever, and uh, really really excited to to see where that is, and also. I feel like Maker's Cash Strength is, is pretty widely available, like you can get that. So if it does well tonight, people have an opportunity to get that. Also, by the way, folks, whatever we are, we'll be doing a live stream with me at some point. Got to get them some whiskey. But um, from the looks of it, they really do get, uh, get into bourbon. So I can't wait for that show. Also, for those who follow the podcast... I got a new intro song coming up. I can't wait to tell you about that. Uh, Hal Davis is getting, you know, supporting the uh, the Shure SM7B. This is uh, this is my. I love this mic. This is what a lot of great musicians play with. I'm not a musician. My only talent is uh, is, is drinking bourbon, as I often say on my show. Now I will tell you all that I am. I was going to, uh, tonight was going to be a spitting night. Like I was going to spit because of, um, because of my desire to like cut some calories, but I forgot my spittoon. I forgot my spittoon. So we're not going to be spitting. So Godspeed. Wish me luck. All right, everybody. While I am tasting, I am not going to be as interactive uh, but I will pause in between and chat with you all from time to time. Uh, I'm going to put the results here that have been sealed that and that I do not have a, um, I have not seen. And uh, Allison had put down, put in there together. So here we go. I have eight cast strength bourbons to taste tonight. Here we go. Glass number one. By the way, if you all haven't had a chance to check it out, uh, my my show with Charles Woodson, you know, I got to meet him in, in Orlando. Really, really great. Um, uh, really, really, really great interview. Great guy. And you should go check that out. He's also he's got a bourbon, and and it's a bourbon that uses the uh, the rapid aging technique, and it kind of like um it kind of like you know starts that conversation. Uh, rapid aging is starting to eke in there in in the positive quality side, so really really uh, excited to see where he goes with that and where what uh, the climate is going to be for that type of bourbon. So glass one. 
ADH Whiskey in the house. If you all haven't been to uh, Matt's channel, make sure you go over his channel. Give him a big old uh, subscription. He does a really good job. He won a tasting competition for the world's best uh, whiskey taster. I think that's what it was called with the Bard Sound Bourbon Company. And, you know, he's quite the taster. Here we go. Glass one, smelling all like a vanilla caramel. And stop me if you've heard that before when you you know heard bourbon being described, but that's the real deal. There's some fruit in here. I guess I should be taking notes. My notebook's getting filled up, right? All right, one. This is a hint of uh, pepper, too. Mm. On the palate, it's uh, it's got some like cola, cocoa, and like a root beer. Very unique. I kind of I like that a lot. Uh, now Matt Ray uh it gives us uh, a little bit of spending money in the super chat. Thank you, thank you for that, Matt Ray. And he writes, uh, for your Uber tonight, Fred. Well, as you would know, it may be a surprise to you, but I actually walk. I walk. Now, how far my home is? Well, you know, not that far. But you know what? I'm trying to lose weight, trying to get steps in, and it's effective. So glass one, very tasty. Definitely, uh, definitely is a uh, is a drinker. Now I am going to be uh, rinsing my palate out with uh, some soda water. I am um, I'm a big believer of using sparkling water. It is um, um, it is really it kind of like like all the bubbles just really kind of help clean the tongue and. Just make it make it fresh. I also have some almonds if I need to further cleanse the palate, and the almonds will be, work as kind of like a bittering agent, and, and then the and then the soda water comes in and you know refreshes it. Glass two. If you haven't yet, we're still early. We're going to um, uh, we're going to be trying to you know get to 500 likes tonight. So if we haven't yet. Smash that like button and let's let's get to a goal of uh, 500 likes. You know, uh, glass two. Glass two's got a touch of the funk. I like the funk. You know, I like to get all up in the funk. It's got a smell of biscuits coming out of the oven. Mmm. Honey, cornbread, jalapeno, and like uh like salt, like a, just a basic salt. One and two, definitely very different, very very different bourbons.
Uh, Andy S. writes, uh, Fred, I love your insides. It's really helped me pick better bourbons. Well, I love my insides too, especially my liver. My liver, you know, is, is a fantastic operating organ. Uh, and it's helped me through so many nights like tonight. But I know you meant insights. But seriously, I, I do I do want to kind of take this as a moment to uh, uh, I, I want to take this as a moment to get uh, talk a little bit about a plan that I have for 2021. I am taking an ode from the um, NBA players and practicing load management. Load management. Um, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm only tasting on certain days. And like I do a lot of private tasting, so I'm trying not to do two tastings in a day. And uh, try not to do two band tastings in a day. So trying to, you know, only have, you know, one tasting a day. So that I know you meant insights. And thank you for that, Andy. I just wanted to talk about my liver for a moment. Nathan Russell writes, um, thanks for being you with hearts popping out of his eyes. He's talking about like, um, talking about like the looking at yourself in the mirror you know looking at yourself in the mirror nathan you know i i know it's tough but sometimes you just gotta sit stand there and look and have a conversation with yourself and ask yourself do people like me am i handsome enough gosh darn it why don't people like me sometimes you just gotta talk yourself through whatever's on your mind good luck with that all right so let's go to glass three Woo! Last three has got a little bit of a peanut butter. Oh, going back to that. Going back to two, closing the book on that one. I think I finished it up with a little note of salt, kind of like a finish of salt. Glass three is starting with a peanut butter. Kind of a chocolate. Kind of a little, you know, on the palate feels a little oily. And nutty, so this is a very strong kind of like nutty, um, nuttiness. And you know, you know, you get those kind of like the the nuts that you get on a you put on a Sunday, like they're finely chopped and they put it on like a chocolate Sunday. That's the kind of nut nuttiness I'm kind of talking about, like a little nuttiness with some chocolate. Just want to put the Sunday. Okay. Uh 1k with a with the $10 uh super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, mentions in the next comment. Uh rare breed in a live blind taste off. Perfect way to end the week. Yeah, this is a week that ended, you know, it's very strange for me cuz we got back from vacation and it was place was covered in snow and I spent like half of every day digging out of snow. In some ways it was kind of cool. I really did kind of enjoyed that. Glass four. I feel like two and one are the leaders over three. Uh, that nuttiness, while nice to me, was not necessarily enough to carry it. But glass four. Mm, glass four is very, very interesting. It's 
So four reminds me of like co the cotton candy stand at the fair. And then you go over to the, the corn dog stand. So you got the cotton candy smell and the smell of corn dogs. Oh, wait, funny story for you, man. When the, the I got super sick eating a corn dog at the uh, Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and I hurled like everywhere. Like I didn't even have a bourbon yet. Maybe that was a problem. I didn't have any bourbon with a corn dog. Damn thing poisoned me like instantly. It was horrible. Uh, four is definitely, uh, four is a, it's a little, a little bit more mild in flavor than I want it to be, but you know, it's, there's like a butterscotch, you know, pudding there. I'm not sure on this one yet. I mean, it's good. All of the, everything I've tasted so far. It's good. It's just not, not, uh, four is not wowing me. Three didn't wow me either. Going to cleanse the palate. Dram Bam, thank you, ma'am, uh, says, uh, Fred, I'm so glad you're doing well. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I actually feel great. Everything's going really well in the family. Uh, getting my second vaccine on, on Sunday, actually. So looking forward to that. Not necessarily looking forward to the reaction, per se, but it'll be very interesting to see how that one, how that one goes. Okay, so glass five. Take a look at that. It's a beautiful color. Got this in a blade and bow glass. Ooh. Mmm. Oh yeah. Cracker Jacks. Taffy. Saltwater taffy, praline. Mm. This five is delicious. Five is absolutely delicious. I saw a lot of comments about my hair in there i'm always um i'm i'm always i'm always a little like um like don't know how to to respond you know like i know like youtube and you know these live streams you're you're on there and there's there's like you know people commenting about how you look and what you wear and how old you look and everything and i'm like and i just want to taste whiskey you know i mean I, i'll fix up my hair for you i promise I'll, I'll i'll fix it up for you but i just want to taste whiskey but uh i am growing my hair out i'm not gonna do a man bun but i'm growing my hair out and you know I, it, it, the thought occurred to me when the barbers we couldn't get to see our barbers and um and i was like you know i've never grown my hair out you know because i was on the army and we cut it and i just always kind of kept it short and I was like, you know, why don't I grow my hair out? And so that's what I've been doing in the, my, my, uh, hairstylist. She's like, you know, you're going to be in a very awkward phase for about six months, but once you get there, you know, you'll like it, you know? And so that's where we are. We're in the, we're in the awkward phase right now. Okay. 
So this smells like uh, this smells like a bunch of peanut shells. Uh, Doug, of course, the um, um, Doug, of course, uh, is uh, saying that if I grow a man bun, uh, he's going to come to the office with clippers. That is a threat. That is a threat. So after kind of like the peanut shells, I want to say like uh, um, like oats, like boiling oats and brown sugar. Okay, so the brown sugar is there. It it comes through on the palate as well as the nose. Uh, there's also like a like a corner of a pop tart, which you get me talking about pop tarts, I get all excited. I love me some pop tarts. Like I probably ate more pop tarts as a kid than anything else. And so maybe like that brown sugar pop tart. Um, they still make those. Oh, Jacqueline doesn't let me get pop tarts anymore, so. Um, pop tart, but it's not a, it's not, it's not a long, you know, finish. There's not a long finish there. There's not a, uh, kind of like all mouth coating kind of style, but you know, there is a lot, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of flavor initially and then a little bit out. I'll sip on some like regular water. And then have a, a little swish. Holy cow, we've already been here for 30 minutes. That's awesome. I love it. So I'll just kind of take a moment and, and look at some uh, some questions here. And also, if you haven't yet, if you're new to the channel, uh, I'm slow on the live streams uh, You know, this year. But last year we did a lot of live streams, and I do plan to get back into the rotation for live streams. But you know, when you you got two young kids, um, and my my private tasting schedule's been booked, I'm also starting to get booked for in person events again. I am so excited about that, especially when we roll them all. You know, the kind of a I've got a tour I'm working on that we're gonna roll out between like June and September. Very very excited about that, and I cannot wait for you all to learn about the new programming I got. Um, but uh, hit the subscribe button because we do a lot of fun stuff here. And it is, it's 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 largely about the bourbon. I do everything I can to educate folks. I've written books. Um, I've interviewed all the master distillers and, you know, some who are no longer with us. And I even, um, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of is that I've discovered forgotten distillers in some of my books like Whiskey Women and Bourbon, the Rise, Fall, and Rebirth of American Whiskey. Uh, one of the favorite uh, stories I ever wrote about was uh, about the master distiller for uh, Stitzel Weller in, um, in the 60s. He was, uh, he was once homeless, and he basically self-taught himself and became one of the greatest uh, master distillers of that time, and no one really knows about him. His name is Roy Dawes. So if you get a chance, go to fredminnick.com and check out that story. Uh, and members, I'm, I'll post that in, in, the, in, the, in the community later on. To glass seven, uh, I'll go ahead and pour this and then start looking through here for some questions. Uh, Green Designs, thank you for what you do. I've learned a lot by watching you and listening to you. Thank you for that, Green Designs. Uh, Dusty Dan's reviews, what is up? Dusty Dan's in the house. Always good to see Dusty Dan. I love that. Dusty Dan up in here. Um, Dram Man, Kentucky, have you done any Nulu barrel picks? Doing one tomorrow. Any recommendations? Have a good time. Stay hydrated. And... You know, I know it may not look cool, 
but you know spitting will keep you from falling on the ground if there's a whole bunch of barrel picks there so just uh just just be careful uh gene grunts uh doing some uh balcony single malt yeah right on uh rare breed ha or rare bird has rare breed one yet of course that's where he always goes it's funny <laughs> all right so glass seven Okay. Okay. Glass seven is um really coming in a little light. Maybe a touch of spice, but you know, this is a pretty muted one. I'm not I'm not picking up a lot on the nose. You know, there's some cornbread, honey. But this one, this one definitely is not, um, um, not going too crazy. Nathan Russell with another super chat. Thank you for that, Mr. Russell. Hope you're doing well out there. Staying warm, COVID free. So uh, again, we're doing a super chat here tonight, and if you all, if you all add anything, uh, if you add to it, it's going to the bourbon fund. Basically, I spend a lot of money on bourbon, and some of these things are media samples, but I try to get uh, as buy as many of them as I possibly can. You know, for example, I bought, I bought. Uh, this, 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 this. So the only, the only things I didn't buy in here were the uh, Larceny Barrel Proof and the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I bought everything else. So, yeah. Uh, yes, so you all know about Tater. So Tater is a, is a character my wife dresses up as. You know, I see it's... You know, Tater's coming up in the chat. Uh, tater is someone who dresses, you know, my, my wife dresses up as a Tater and talks as in, in her accent. And she, Tater, may be a part of the, uh, may very well indeed be a part of the, of the tour coming up that I cannot wait to get into um, more. Let's go to Glass 8. And look at this. We're almost, uh, you know, I had like no, I gave you all almost no notice. And we're almost at 300 uh, in the chat. That's just awesome. So cheers to you all. Thank you all for coming on and and, uh, and join a little live stream with me tonight. Ooh, glass eight. Glass eight's got some, um, like some apples. It smells a little bit like apples. Molasses. It's very interesting. I like the way eight smells. Apples, molasses, and then some like pepper. Very. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. That is friggin' good. So, on the palate, it this reminds me of like um, cinnamon apple pie. So you have an apple pie, cinnamon on the on the top of it. You got all that good like fruity goodness in there, and uh, would be absolutely uh, I, I absolutely love it. I think I think eight eight is a contender here. Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. I uh, would love to do a live Dusty tasting with you, my friend, to the Bourbon Fund. Cheers. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. The Bourbon Fund is a real thing, folks. 
you know, a man can go broke real quick buying bourbon, as you know. I really appreciate that. And yes, I'd love to do a dusty tasting with you. Let's get it on the schedule. Uh, Derek P. Uh, home poker bourbon. All right. Yes. Yeah, so that's right. I'm uh, or now when you say home poker, are you playing poker? Are you playing poker? Or are you talking about being an Oklahoma State Cowboy fan? I, I don't know where you were going with that one. But thank you for the super chat. That's going to help us uh, pay some bourbon bills. Uh, Tim Flanagan says, uh, Fred is often imitated, but never duplicated. Thank you for what you do. Tim, thank you for, very much for that. I, you know, I don't really see many people wearing ascots out there. It's not something that folks really, uh, pull off, but true story. There are people who will go into liquor stores and say they're me to try and get bottles. Um, one year we had someone posing as me trying to be me at bourbon and beyond, you know, to get into where the artists were and stuff and security, you know, basically they found him before, you know, it, it did anything, but, uh, there has been some real impersonations of me before. That's a little bit more scary. So, uh, okay. So let's start narrowing this down. Let's just take a look at the notes that, um, that I feel like, I feel like seven and six are going to be pretty easy ones for me to dismiss. Seven, all right, six. I'm gonna keep six, moving seven out. All right, so I gotta, I gotta figure out, I gotta make some room here. I'll put it, I'll put the, I'll just do it by the, uh, do it by that. Yeah, let's do it by that. Okay, so I'm putting seven and last. I'm gonna try one again. Hey, look at that. We got 314 in the chat. That's friggin' awesome. Woo! If you haven't yet, help me get to that goal of 500 likes uh, for the night. That helps with the algorithm of, of YouTube. YouTube has changed its algorithm completely. And, you know, I was kind of recognized as a streamer. And if you get if you don't really get... Uh, um, if you don't If you don't get those good likes, then... They won't. They won't focus. Uh, focus on that. So, they won't focus on your on your episode. Uh, Thrasher, Thrasher. So Fred dressing up like Tater isn't a bedroom thing. Also, just to let you know, I did pick up whiskey women and mead finally. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um. So. I imagine somebody would put the the tater costume on and get a little kinky on up in here. Um, I will say that my wife is watching. And if you would like to ask her about the kinkiness of our love life, then uh, you can go ahead and do that. Or maybe I'll have her on in the next chat and you can ask her. <laughs> Gonna get my ass in trouble. Gonna get my ass in big trouble. Thank you again. Looks like Nate's leading the clubhouse here for my uh, for my bourbon, uh, my bourbon fund. You know, some people, you know, I appreciate appreciate everybody coming in, but boy, Nate's bringing Nathan Russell's bringing the heat tonight with this uh, with all this. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The the comment, the Jacqueline. That, that's my wife there, everybody. Um. Uh, yep, the tater costume comment gonna get me in trouble. Thanks a lot, Thrasher. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go to glass one. Ooh, glass one's a little better than I remembered. 
That cola note is, is, is strong, really money. Glass two. I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a toffee. Toffee to the nose of two. Class three. Mm. I love the peanut butterness of glass three. There's like the saltiness to it. Then it has like this, uh, you know, uh, kind of a Chardonnay ish butteriness to it. I didn't think I was going to like three over one and two, but I do. Uh, so I'm putting three ahead of those two. Glass four. Glass four is excellent. Cotton candy. Butterscotch pudding. Absolutely excellent. Glass five. There is a beautifulness to glass five. This taffy, praline, there's a maltiness. There's a beauty, a complexity in glass five that I don't feel like is represented in the previous four. Glass six. Glass six is a great example of when you feel like you've uh, you are you are going to dis dismiss something. I felt I felt like I was gonna dismiss six uh, on that second tasting, and then I did a side by side to uh, did the side by side with seven, and you know six really stood out for me. Now I'm putting six ahead of one two three four, one two three four, but not ahead of eight. Mm, I love eight. All right, so I got a super chat in here from Greg. Anxious to see which wins. Cheers to your cold friend in North Carolina, North Dakota, Les Miles. Yeah, how about it for Les? You know, seriously, uh, if Les Miles hadn't left Oklahoma State, I feel like we would have won like five championships. Uh, Corey, thank you for the super chat. Um uh, uh, what's your, so funny, funny story for you here. I cannot see, when I put it up there like that, I can't see it. Oh, right, there we go. I, I have, I had a graphic I had to move here. Fred, what's your involvement with Bourbon Plus these days? Built my educate education quickly. Thanks to your efforts. Cheers. Uh, I posted, I posted on Instagram, uh, but I resigned from Bourbon Plus, uh, you know, I think sometime in the fall of last year. So, uh, you know, I wish them well. It's now ran by Carla Carlton. She is a top-notch editor and knows tons about bourbon. An excellent author. So keep supporting that wonderful magazine. Please do. Okay, so now it's time to narrow it down. Look, I know five and six are going to be in the running as well as eight. So it, the, the final three are going to be eight, five, and six. 
Now I got to decide where one, two, three, and four go. Class one, just really just, you know, there, strong, ready to go. I think two has a little bit, two has more depth than six or one. Um, it definitely has like more like, you know, uh, viscosity around it. Three's got some bite to it. The alcohol power kind of loses some of the flavorness to it. So I feel like the alcohol power in three kind of puts it there, uh, you know, toward the end a little bit. Now, we know these are all cash strength, but when the alcohol becomes overwhelming and you can't really taste anything after the alcohol, uh, like you can with one, two, and four, you know, that is an issue. There is flavor there, but when you're looking to go deeper into the flavor, I think three just might be too hot. So three is going into that next slot. And I have a super chat I need to get to. Uh, Jason uh, Zolik, $20, thank you. That's going to be going to the Bourbon Fund, going to help us out, uh, you know, have some bottles around here. So I appreciate that. Be able to go into a store. Uh, with the money I got from this and and buy up some stuff. All right, so Jason asks, when doing a tasting, what's typically your personal limit of samples while being serious about your tasting before you are too tipsy to be honest in your scoring? Cheers to the bourbon fun, mate. Uh, great question. And the, you know, the best thing I can tell you is that at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, I taste, you know, I'll, I'll taste 500 personally in in a weekend time. And that'll be like my panels, uh, what we call a super sweet, the, uh, the uh, sweets, the sweepstakes, the runoff rounds and, and all that. We will taste a lot. Um, I never feel like my palate can you know I, my palate can keep going but my ability to say like uh to write notes and to be descriptive about what it is 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 that's that's what gets hurt when you when you do a lot um you know i can say i could do this all night and tell you consistently that i like uh eight over three and seven i mean i could do that all night consistently on you know something for something like that is something that doesn't really change for me but it, it would be my ability to tell you why you know because you lose you know you lose motor skills you know you, i mean this is it's serious stuff that's why at competitions you taste or, or you taste and you spit uh here i had intended to spit tonight but as i press play um, I got to, I was like, you know, I'll just sip. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I won't, I, I won't spit. So there's not really a lot of consumption going on. It's just little bitty niblets going on the palate, which is also another technique, but you have to be very mindful of how much you take in and, uh, you know, it can get away from you. Just ask my membership community. They have seen me in action. Okay, so what is going to go next?
four. Brian Toner, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, thank you for the kind words on my books. I really appreciate it. I'd love to know what your favorite book is. I really would. Nate Russell in the chat, our champion of the super uh, of the super chats today, asked the question: When are you cutting your Samson? Uh, you must have missed it earlier, but I'm gonna keep growing it out. I'm gonna keep growing this hair out. We'll see where it goes. But I won't be man bunning it. And until until Jacqueline tells me to cut it, I'm not I'm not gonna cut him. She's like, oh, I like your hair. It's so good. I like it long. So glass two. Glass two goes in the next spot. I'm actually going to keep glass one in this taste off. So we have one, eight, five, and six. My goodness, we've been going at it for an hour now, and, and we've almost got... We got 360 in the chat. That's just awesome. Thank you all so much for joining. If you haven't yet, go ahead and you know hit the like button. It really helps to tell other people, uh, based on the YouTube algorithm, about you know what maybe this is an episode you should watch. It's live right now. Let's do it. Um, Michael asked a question: What are your thoughts on scent kits to train your nose and palate? If you think they are beneficial, which ones do you recommend? And thank you for your service. God bless you. Michael, I appreciate you. I appreciate that comment. I appreciate you following. I appreciate all of it. I mean, uh, but I do actually believe in the scent kits. Um, I, I cut my teeth on scent kits, I want to say, in 2008 when I was in France. Um, I was given a scent kit by... Uh, a cognac uh, kind of like a cognac god and he created these little kits for for tasters and uh, they're very effective they're very very effective i do think they are a notch above like getting like your own essential oils or things like that but um i cannot um i can't recall the the two i have i have i have them in the back I can tell you, um, I can tell you what they are, but I'll have to get up and break away from the tasting for a second. But, um, but yes, I do believe in them. I think they're great, you know, for training yourself. Okay. So we have um, glasses one, eight, five, and six. So let's go ahead and look through my notes. Uh, glass one. Glass one's got this like root beer, cola, caramel, pepper note to it that I really like. Glass eight, it just is like this. It's like this apple pie with cinnamon. I just and it's just so beautiful i love it and there's like a hint of pepper that comes in underneath like all of that sweetness and fruitiness uh five is like got kind of a maltiness to it it's cracker jacks saltwater taffy praline just absolutely delicious and then six kind of like this kind of peanut shell on the nose uh <laughs> like a boiling oatmeal some brown sugar in there uh, also with some pepper notes in there. I, I just, I like six so much and it's, it's one of those six is a personal preference one. So 
out of the lineup here, and this is this is where when you're a taster and you are trying to um and you are trying to you're trying to differentiate uh, between one bourbon uh, over the other. You have to try and pull out your personal preference. There's a there's a style of bourbon I love, but I also know that style of bourbon would not necessarily uh, beat something else that I wouldn't buy on a regular basis in a blind tasting. Because what I look for in these tastings, I'm not looking for like, oh, I like that one just so much more than that one. I'm looking to see like where it's hitting on my palate, how many points on the palate it's hitting, uh, how long it's on the palate, you know, how many different flavors are there. And, you know, that's a very different discussion than like, you know what? I want uh, Old Forester 1920 neat. That's a very different discussion than that. Or the once upon a time like order I would have, which would be like Henry McKenna, 10 uh, year old. Now, does my personal preference sometimes come through in a tasting? Absolutely. I'm only human. And, but, you know, I do my best to separate that. And it's also important to note that what I taste today would be very different than what I taste tomorrow. So, like, as a taster, you have so many things that can influence you, just like an athlete would if they're, you know, going to perform in a game. You know, something could be in their head, you know, it could have a fight with their spouse they could have uh you know eaten something they shouldn't have they might have smoked a little something something you know not that i did actually no i did i smoked a cigar yesterday so i mean there's all kinds of things that could like change your palate and how you feel and so that's why i i used to do like when i would do like scorings i would taste three times and uh on three different days because I wanted to make sure that I would not have an off day. So, but I do not feel like today is an off day. Uh, I feel pretty good about the palette. So here we go. We're gonna we're gonna nail it down here. We're going to pick our winners. Uh, beautiful uh, comment coming in here in the super chat from Andy S. Helping out your insides. Andy is somebody who really cares about the liver. He wants my liver to be good and strong. And I appreciate that. He loves the uncut, unfiltered stuff. and would love to train his palate more and expand. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much for that, Andy. Look at that. Nate Russell in the house, coming back, coming back. He is number one tonight in the super chat. I can't tell you how much he's raised because I'm focusing more on the bourbons. But thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, as you know, the super chat tonight goes directly to my, after Google gets its cut, goes directly to my bank account, which then will be dispersed into a Kentucky area liquor store and, uh, And I will buy me some bourbon for a tasting. Glass 8 is just so good. That apple pie, I mean, it's so good. It's just all over the palate. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. Apple pie city. Last five. Uh, thank you from uh, Michael. No comment there. Just uh, adding to the bourbon fun. Helping a fella get bourbon. I appreciate that. Oh, three toes of fury in the house. Love that handle. Class five. Class 5's got some complexity. It's got some really nice complexity. Mm. 
This is hard. Mm-hmm. Either one of these, there are four up here. All four of these uh, could be the winner. Um, this is a very difficult tasting for me. Mm. Uh, great question coming in from uh, uh, Tiger Harvest. Do you have advice for someone who is classically trained in wine to get into the whiskey world? Seems very different. It seems very similar, but I've always felt like the language is so different. Well, as a matter of fact, I was trained by master sommeliers. I spent a lot of time in wine. Um, you know, it is, I think what is different is like, it's the, is the heat. And I am a, I'm, I'm of the belief if you have a whiskey palate, your wine palate goes away. Like, I mean, look, I can taste wine. I can still drink wine. I have a great time with wine, but I can't dissect things and tell you like a Saint Emilion had like a, a black currant, um, like I used to in the old days, because I have a whiskey palate. My palate is completely geared toward whiskey and spirits. And so like you have to, if you come over here and dabble, um, you know, that that's one thing, but the one thing that's really different is that in wine you get really good information about everything in the bottle you know you will you will learn about what ava it was or what aoc it was or doc and you'll learn about um you know where the sun was how much uh um how much rain the the vines got uh what type of fermentation the uh, the winemakers had to play with. I mean, you get so much information with wine, whereas in whiskey, man, I've been I've been fighting this for a long time. I, in my book, Bourbon Curious, I wrote I was like, people would hide like the mash bills, and that's basically just the the grains. They would hide all these things from from you, and and it's like why? It's because they don't really care about the branding. Like I can't tell you the distillery won't tell you what that mash bill is. The distillery won't tell you what that mash bill is. Um, you know, these other ones, uh, like this distillery won't tell you what the mash bill is. You know, so you have a lot of things that the distilleries keep from you. In in Whereas in wine, you have a lot. So there is a, there, there are a lot of similarities. Um, but it, it, it's the best thing is to do is to taste and taste and taste just like in wine. But you can apply those those techniques that you have in wine to um to whiskey and welcome welcome to whiskey and I, i'm glad you get came over here because uh really a lot of my tasting skills came from um came from um uh, you know learning with master sommeliers like isabel and uh palo Barberi and um um a, a lot of great uh, a lot of great people i used to i used to write for sommelier journal so i had a lot of i did a lot of stuff with them uh okay so this is the this is the second request for wanting to know what scent kits to use so if you all would not mind i am going to go in the back i'm going to go in the back and i'm going to grab oh aroma academy aroma academy that's it i love aroma academy scent kit and then there's uh knows your bourbon has a good scent kit so those are two scent kits that i definitely uh think are good so and by the way kurt thank you very much for the super chat for adding to the bourbon fund that uh will help me buy bourbon so i have got to got to choose marty mcleod asks a great question which one has the best nose all right we'll start there I think eight has the best nose. Um, eight has the best nose. I feel like it has like all that appleness quality. And then um, let's see. I feel like six is uh, six is like really unique. I like the smell of peanut shells, and you know the you know one and five are kind of equal. So eight, if you go by nose only. 
and it's one on six. So Joseph, uh, come five, bringing in $5. It's going to help me with my bourbon fun. And, um, he's got the, he's got the mash bill in there for, um, uh, he's got the mash bill in there for, for, uh, for Woodenville. Very nice. Thank you for that, Joseph. Appreciate that. I think six just took five. Five is on the palate. Five is on the palate. Has a lot of nice stuff going on. Then it kind of goes away after after the flavors are there. Six is on the palate. Flavors are there. Then it, boom, amps up and like a little bit a different kick of flavor comes in. So it's going to be between six and eight. Five is going to be your fourth place winner. One will be your um, third place. And we definitely need, I don't think we need re-pours. We're good. Johnny asked the question, uh, would you ever pay secondary? Well, um, a gentleman never tells, right? And let's see. Um, Caleb says, psyched about this tasting. Excellent grouping. Thank you. This, is, this grouping here was largely brought to you by the membership of my YouTube community. You know, I mean, these are my people. This is like, it's like in that YouTube community. We're in there interacting every day with the tools that we have in YouTube. It is so much fun. I absolutely, absolutely love my YouTube community. But they nominated Rare Breed. Someone, somebody nominated Well Ever Foolproof and a Maker's Cash Strength and Booker's. And then um, I threw in Woodenville and uh, the Smooth Ambler. So... Oh my gosh, folks, we are almost to 400 in the chat. We're almost there. That is so awesome. Thank you all for coming. The results are about to come. I mean, we're, we're two glasses away from, from picking the winner here. And if you haven't already, click that like button. It helps us get, you know, get to the 400 mark. And um, what that does is basically tells the, uh, you know, the algorithm lords on YouTube Hey, this channel on over here is doing okay. We got folks who are liking the channel. We, they're liking the, the show. So let's show it to other folks. So that's basically how the algorithm communicates to one another. They have kind of like a, a messed up uh, Michigan person moves to Alabama and takes on a, a you know an Alabama accent. And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got tonight. So, glass eight. God, glass eight is so good. It smells so beautiful. Dad gum, apple pie, mmm, cinnamon, apple pie, cinnamon, apple pie, cinnamon, apple pie, apple pie, apple. Hmm. Some bitch. Some bitch. Brian Toner says the Bourbon Curious and Bur Whiskey Women are the two books he's been reading. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And it does appear that Nate Russell continues to be draining the um the <laughs> he was there he's draining he's draining the super stickers, folks. He's bringing it. He's bringing it. Uh, okay. All right. Listen. This is the this is the comment of the day. But folks, I have to tell you, clowns freak me out. Like this is like the one thing that I'm deathly afraid of. Like if I see a clown, 
I'm walking the other way. And, you know, so so for me to put this up here just no, tells you how funny I think this is. And by the way, we hit 400. Thank you all for coming. And I think it's because of DO1, the clown here. Hey, Fred, I hit the like button and I emailed Google and they said they should recommend this episode to everyone on YouTube. So thank you for emailing Google. It is all about the Google. Last six. This comes down to two very different styles. Two very different styles. Hey, listen, Bourbon Buddies says, yeah, I hate clowns too. It's a legit fear for me. I freak out. Am I right? Am I right? That is some really freaky shit. Clowns. Like, whoever came up with the idea of putting all that makeup on you and putting, getting the big shoes and creating the car, that is some scary-ass shit, man. And honestly, I saw the movie It when I was a kid, and that fucked me up. That was that 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 was it for me. Also, people who have scissors as hands, like Freddy Krueger, that, um, that's creepy. Okay, so what we have here, we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision based on we got two very different perspectives um, of, of flavors. I am leaning toward one, but the other doesn't want to go away. All right, I've made my decision. It's going to be glass eight. I love me some apple pie. I love cinnamon. I love all the butterscotch that's in this. There's so many things in glass eight that is just wowing me. Um, so very excited to... Very excited to um, see what see what this is. I'm going to rinse my palate out here one more time. Got a little bit of a thing there. The soda is Pellegrino. Just a basic Pellegrino can. That's all it is. So I'll go ahead and answer uh, a few questions. If you all have some, um, some questions here, um, I'll answer those before we get into, get into the, the winners. I am not going to have graphics. Sometimes I have graphics. Uh, this time it's just going to be me talking about them. But feel free to get me any any um, send send me any questions that you have here. Anything you like to know. Also, don't forget about that bourbon fund. That bourbon fund is a real thing. Like that's gonna that's uh, not going to my child's uh, college fund. That's not going to pay bills. That's not going to. Uh, get anything, you know, like a new ascot for me, that's straight going to buy a bourbon. I am serious about this. Going into stores, I am buying bourbon, and I'm going to taste them right here on this channel. And uh, you remember last year I did these, uh, I did the series of tasting all these different bourbons, and I, I would go into the store, and I'd buy them. And so that's, that's what it's all about. I'm going to take the money here that we have, and I'm going to go buy some. So... Uh, Jose Garcia asked a question, a good place to buy bourbon in San Diego. There's a store in San Diego called keg and bottle keg and bottle happens to do the, um, a barrel picks for, uh, my podcast. I'm a part of 
Bourbon Pursuit. It is an excellent, excellent store. They'll treat you right. Go check them out. Listen, Nate Russell, folks, bringing it in, bringing it in the house, bringing it tonight. He's he's helping with that bourbon fund. We don't see anyone else like Nate Russell out there helping the bourbon fund. If you want to help, if you want to become a Nate Russell, go ahead and get up on it. Paul Madden, what are your thoughts on the Murray Hill Club? Uh, I mean, it's good. I think I really respect uh, what they're doing. I really respect Nancy Fraley. And uh, I, they're, uh, the cigar blend, um, I, I think I like a little bit better. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, listen, uh, Ramon Salazar has got a really good point here. Um, you, uh, you can now buy Pappy at secondary with the amount Nate has donated. I mean, for, for real, for real, that, that, that's the real story right there. Uh, Patrick Fisher asked a question, Fred, when did you start wearing the ascot and, and why any backstory there? All right, so there there is a uh, there is a backstory to it. Look, as a kid, I loved watching like detective movies, and there was always like this like strong like you know detective figure or like rich asshole guy. So we would have like you know a good guy and a bad guy. That you know, often both would be wearing ascots at some point in the in the episode, and I just kind of fell in love with that kind of like uh, that that look. And as it as it became an adult and would want to go to the Derby, I basically wanted to uh, get an ascot. And I would go into clothing stores. I was like, "Hey, do you have an ascot?" And uh, people would be like, "What the fuck are you talking about, man? There's no what, what the fuck's an ascot?" Or if they didn't know what an ascot was, like they'd be like, they'd hit me back like, "Oh, are you a 1960s old man? You know, like making fun of me." Um, and I was like, "Yeah, okay." And it was when I was on a wine trip in uh, Italy where this really renowned wine writer was wearing, uh, and Jacqueline was with me, and he was wearing an ascot. I was like, listen, I would love to start buying ascots. The dude was an absolute prick to me. He was like, you know, boom, like ignored me, all this stuff. And then he saw he saw Jacqueline, my wife. He's like, hey, hey, babe, what's going on? He's like a 72-year-old man, and he's like, Hey, yeah, why, why, why are you with this dude? You know, I still got it. And like, uh, you know, he was literally hitting on my wife. And the guy was like, uh, you know, his name is Bill Marsano. Google him. He's like a legendary wine writer. And I was like, man, this guy, this guy doesn't like me. And, you know, this was when I was, you know, really new in the game and everything. And he was just like, you know, Jacqueline and I, I think we'd been married for a year. You know, so, you know, you got that new kind of like, you know, bravado of a, as a husband. Like, man, that, I mean, that guy's like, he's like hitting on my wife. And um, and so I get um, uh, the, the trip ends and the guy mailed us. He had his wife made custom made me like five ascots and mailed them to me. And he had a and he had a handwritten note and he said, here, Fred, here's some mascots. Say hell say hello to your beautiful wife for me. And I was like <laughs> So that's the story of how I got uh my first ascots and kind of like uh uh how it how it all kind of came to be. But uh at any rate, you know, Bill and I were, were friends and I still chat with him from time to time. But uh um <laughs> Oh, I always love telling, I love telling the story. Uh, thank you all, everybody for the comments about the backdrop. You know, my team led by, uh, Rachel Dow really did a great job putting this together. And, you know, there's a lot of great things coming, um, uh, coming ahead on this channel. I'm telling you, we've got a lot of great things that we're going to be doing. And, um, you know, and Nate's asking me, when am I cutting the Samson? Referring to my hair. As I've mentioned numerous times, I'm keeping the hair. I'm going to keep growing it out. We'll see where it goes. I don't know. Maybe I do cut it. But but right now, I have I have never had long hair. We'll see where it goes. And uh, maybe maybe I cut it. Maybe I don't. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Jason says, uh, you should do a, a bourbon, a Bardstown bourbon flight tasting. 
Un unfortunately, it's not available in Pennsylvania. Ah, Jason, that's a good idea. I have done a few of those. And if you go back into the channel, you'll see that we did an episode on Memorial Day. Uh, I'm an Iraq veteran, and my battle buddy in Iraq actually lost his son in Iraq. And uh, Mark Irwin, who what is, who's the uh, chairman and CEO of uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company, um, is uh, he he is a former Green Beret and is a veteran, and uh, he he has uh, several friends in in you know who are former you know Green Berets, and we did a special on like what it means to be a uh, a veteran uh, and losing your comrades, and, and what we did was we had an entire episode basically remembering the people we had lost and drinking bourbon to them. And, um, it was really beautiful. And so I, I, and of course I did, uh, create the, uh, I did create the, uh, the library that they have. So they have a nice vintage library. I acquired all those bourbons there. And so that was, uh, I do have a great relationship with them and, uh, maybe I will do something there. So, yeah. Um, Okay, so let's see. Uh, Corey Barrett asks, what do you make of the MGP acquisition of Luxco benefits to the industry and the consumer? Uh, actually, I did a video on that. Just go into the videos. I did a hot take on that one real quick. I, I, I think it's... I, I think uh, the, the, the Luxco acquisition to me was... Um, I thought Luxco is was worth way more than what you know they they got, but I see I see the um, uh, the Lux you know family getting in there and becoming chairman one day. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, my boy Kurt, Kurt, how are you, man? I miss you, I miss you, Kurt. Uh, you uh, talked about the terroir of wine. Do you see consumers' interest in pivoting in the terroir of whiskey? Does it help drive the market towards transparency? Listen, we do have a real issue in whiskey in that we have a lack of transparency. It's a real thing. It's been getting better, but it continues uh, to be a problem for us. And that, and, and and also, and when you get information, sometimes it's just kind of wrapped in a little bow of bullshit. And I think there has to be an acceptance of like, we're never really going to be satisfied with the amount of information that we get or the accuracy of the information. Like when a brand tells you something, they will say our grown is our corn is from local farmers. Well, they forget to tell you that, Oh, by the way, that local farmer also supplies uh, four roses um, and heaven Hill and Jim beam, you know? So, I mean, th there's so much, in this that is just never going to be transparent. And when you get the information, the information still is not necessarily going to be meh. Um, from Michael, it's time for a new bourbon documentary. Your relationships with global bourbon community should make it easy for you to create a superb film and expand the story of bourbon. Thoughts? Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I have, I have been, I had a film play a few years ago and then it, I just never got right back around to it. You know, really those things come down to checks and someone's got to be willing to write a check. That's all what it comes down to. That's always what it comes down to. Or you can go out and, and do it. But unfortunately, if I go out and do it, then that takes away from the things that I do that make money you know, for my family and, and like these private tastings that I do, that's, that's it. And also, also like, you know, YouTube is a very, uh, has been incredible for me. Like I tell people all the time, like YouTube saved me in 2020, this community saved me last year. I mean, in one day I lost, um, uh, bourbon and beyond, um, uh, I, you know, things were all, all in the trajectory for me, like leaving uh, bourbon plus, um, I lost all my live events. I had, uh, I had a major national tasting deal with a prominent hotel chain. I mean, I had all of these things that just went away because of COVID. 
and this channel friggin' saved me. This channel was designed to basically promote bourbon and beyond and all these other things I do and help promote books and stuff. But this channel, man, that's why it's so important to me. Um, but you know, the creating a film, it's gotta be right. And they gotta have the right, like, you know, thing. I am, I've, I've come to realize that I'm, I, I'm not, I am a very, I, I'm a, I'm a unique type of a perfectionist and I don't think I'm easy to work with. And when it comes to something like a film, like I, I someone's got to write the check, you know, to have it all right, you know, to have the right things in there. You got to have, got to have like, uh, you know, a production company, you got to have, uh, um, all that stuff, you know, all those things. Hey, by the way, Nate Russell says you got to put the kiddo to bed. Let, big shout out to Nate for, uh, all his contributions tonight in the in the super chat. Give him a give him a round of applause, folks. Yay! Oh, actually, no, I do have a round of applause. <laughs> I forgot about that feature. It's been so long. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of things that need to happen. But uh, anyway, I I do uh, I do like the idea of maybe doing a a, a film because it's my passion, man. I love this. I absolutely love it. And, you know, don't get me wrong. It, it can happen. So, okay. Let, do we want to know what, uh, where things finished? Who's in? Do we want to know? I think it's time. So here we are. We've been blind tasting. Number eight, one. Number eight, one. And so now we open this up. We're going to find out what the winners were. So I'm going to, all right. So coming in, coming in dead last, dead last. And this is a blind tasting folks. I know not what I taste. I know not what I taste. It's blind. I am not going in and, uh, you know, finding this out. So glass seven, which was, um, Dead last, I said it felt light. Um, it had uh, like a, kind of like a cornbread honey note, folks. It was anything but light. This was larceny, larceny barrel proof, which was one hundred and fourteen point eight proof. So larceny barrel proof, the latest edition of this year, comes in last. And it was an easy last for me tonight. So Larceny did not do well in tonight's blind tasting. Okay, coming in second to last. Uh, this is one that fared very well for me in past blind tastings. And I did feel like there was a quite a bit a, of a drop from, um, you know, you know, the the glass three was way way better than seven and then i felt like three was more competitive in the flight than everything else uh than than seven for sure but it had the, like this peanut butter kind of chocolatey you know note to it and um coming in um oh, let me do this real quick here Coming in at number six place is Booker's. Booker's. Booker's is your sixth place. Now, this is batch 2020-2. 2020-2. The only Booker's that I had in my possession. And again, this was a nomination from the members. 
in the community. Uh, coming in at number five. Coming in at number five um, was a uh, rare breed. So rare breed comes in at five. Rare breed was glass four. Now I have a long history of loving rare breed. Let's see where my notes were today. Cotton candy, uh, <laughs> corn dogs, corn dog nose, uh, you know, cornbread, uh, butterscotch pudding. Now I do know that, uh, cornbread is definitely there in the uh in that kind of like uh style uh that i often love about the uh rare breed uh let's see what is coming in at fourth fourth place in fourth place which i did say if you recall um, wait, no, that's not fourth place. Wait, seven, six, five, four. Hold on. All right, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I have eight glasses. Eight glasses. So, all right, hold on. Yeah, there, hold on. Back everything up one. I forgot there are eight glasses. Okay, so. So, Booker's. So, Booker's actually came in, um. So while okay, I fucked that up. I, so hold on. All right, so larceny was in last, which was eight. The uh, three, which was Maker's Mark, was in seventh place. I mean, sorry, Booker's was seventh place, and then. Um, two, four, and then. Well, Turkey was fifth place. And now in fifth place for real, real fifth place, Maker's Mark Cash Strength. So Maker's Mark Cash Strength was in fifth. That was a clerical error, error on me to, uh, to that one. So in eighth place, Larceny. In seventh place, Booker's. In sixth place, In sixth place, uh, Rare Breed. In fifth place, Maker's Cash Strength. Okay. All right. Here we go. So um, here we are with the with the top four. Coming in at fourth place, the Old Scout Smooth Ambler comes in at fourth place. In third place Weller Weller foolproof so the two that we have remaining the two we have remaining are Elijah Craig and Woodenville Elijah Craig and Woodenville Any guesses to what one? Hop in there. What one? Elijah Craig or Woodenville? Caleb says Woodenville. Let's see. Get the guesses in the chat. Caleb. two. There's two Calebs here back to back. All right, look, they're all coming in here. Folks are uh, making their comments, making their stays, making their uh, plays. Joe Brotruck says, Heaven Hill wins an awful lot with Fred, so Elijah Craig. All right. It looks like we got enough folks uh, voting here. So I'm going to go ahead and break it. Coming in in second place, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Second place, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. So in tonight's exhibition tasting, we have 
a uh, distillery not in Kentucky winning my live stream, Cash Strength Tasting, and we are talking about Woodenville. Woodenville. Woodenville has won tonight's Cash Strength Tasting. Now, you may recall like a basic everyday uh, a basic everyday, you know, Woodenville, the 90 proof one did really, really well in, uh, in one of my Pappy versus the wheel, uh, field episodes a couple years ago or a year ago. And it, uh, here they are again, continuing to impress my palate. And, uh, wow. I mean, that is something that is absolutely something. So congratulations to Woodenville for winning tonight's uh, kind of exhibition style blind tasting. Absolutely unbelievable for me. Now here's a couple here's a couple takeaways for me. Um, one of the one of the things that I'd like to point out is that rare breed always does well for me. It always does well for me. So to see it at such a at number six was a bit of a shocker. Uh, Old Scout, the Smooth Ambler, has been in a, you know, I've tasted this before in a blind tasting, and a, it did not do well. So we have two products right there, kind of like in the middle, and the Bookers, and the Bookers, um, you know, came in, you know, fifth. So the Booker, Smooth Ambler, and the Rare Breed, where they finished really surprised me, especially based on the, um, based on how I had tasted them in the past. And remember, I always say, like, you know, you're different every time you taste. You, you don't, what I taste today will be different than what I taste tomorrow. It's just, it, it's a fact. So those three right there really are surprising to me. Uh, Larceny Barrel Proof typically does not do well with me in, in blinds. And um, and I know I see some super chats coming in. I will get to those. But, you know, the, the top four, the top four uh, outside of the old scout really, you know, well or foolproof. I mean, it's people love it for a reason. Uh, the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Uh, yeah, crazy. And then the Woodenville Scott Seymour saying like, Hey, uh, did you have a cigar yesterday? Yes, I did. I did have a cigar yesterday. So there you go. Uh, tight asked me like, uh, the wilderness trail, uh, rye, is that your barrel? Actually? Yes. I did pick uh, recently did pick a wilderness trail rye. So yeah, it's good stuff. Um, uh, Mike Kelly with the super chat, helping me with the bourbon fun. Thank you very much. Love so many of these. Thank you for the insight and comments. We'll share with my brothers. Thank you, Mike. Always good to see you in here. So we uh, we've got uh, the the super chat fund continues to grow. We are doing. Uh, we might actually be able to buy a, a bottle of Blantons. Uh, not have, No, I'm not doing that. But man, how about it? So Woodenville is your winner tonight. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing that Woodenville is our winner in tonight's live tasting. So. I'll go ahead and entertain uh, questions for a few more minutes, uh, and then I'm going to jump out, take a quick break, and uh, the members and I are going to have, uh, we're going to pitch a wing ding doodle in the members only section, and if you're not a member, all you got to do is click the join button, we're going to have a call in show where we get on there and we, you know, basically talk and hang out and, you know, and uh, Danny Line will say that he couldn't get any of these in Connecticut. It's a long story there. I don't think I've seen Danny in the chat, but fun times, fun times. Uh, so ask away. If you got a question, ask away. All 
Uh, Hal Jarvis says, I picked Woodenville second, but had Rare Breed first. Yeah, how about that? Look, the, the finishing of Rare Breed really, uh, really is a shocker to me. Huge shocker, given how well that one's done. And, you know, some of it, and I'm wondering, I really am legitimate. And this is the same bottle. This is the same bottle that would have been in my best of the 2020 contenders. So part of me does wonder, like, you know, did it a little bit of a, you know, fizzle out in it? I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I, that bottle did not perform well like it normally does for me. Uh, Matthew Parks, how do you think Maker's 46 cash strength would have held up in tonight's competition? I think it would have been very bitter, and I think it would have stood out and may not have stood out in a good way. Uh, but I like, um, I like that. Eric Smith, does clown from Slipknot. Know your fear of clowns. Oh, hell no. Hell no, I didn't tell him that. Uh, when I was interviewing Clown from Slipknot, I was trying to be like spot on interviewer, like, sir, tell me, what what do you think about this uh, song? And uh, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't start that conversation. Um, you know, wouldn't start it with that. Uh, speaking of clowns, Dio One asked, uh, at what age does bourbon start hitting that magic point? Eight years old, eight years old is when those that to me, like the majority of bourbon is really good at eight years old. When you get north of that, it you you have uh, you have between eight and 12 years old. You have a, you know, that very that good and very good can just go up a little notch after 12 years old. The clock is ticking as to whether or not it's going to be too woody, you know? So once you go, uh, once you go past 12 years old, you know, you, you can get over oaked real quick. So, uh, thank you DMC Kentucky for the comments on being a great blind. appreciate that. Um, tight asked, uh, how would dad's hat cast stand up in this competition? I don't know if I would put dad's hat in here because it's a ride and I don't feel like rise, um, uh, you know, cash strength ryes are a good, you know, tasting taste off with cash strength bourbon. So I would typically, um, uh, I would typically not do that. Um, green designs, we get the winner in Texas. Yeah. You, you all deserve the winner in Texas. Like is they're all snowed in there. Uh, okay, folks. So I think I am going to, I'm going to jump out here and go into the, um, go into the members only. So members be paying attention, uh, for a post coming into the community about where to, uh, about where we're going to be streaming. And, uh, I will give you also the call in link for you to click on. And if you're not a member, you'd like to become a member, uh, click the join button and we will have a uh, we'll have a great chat. It'll be a lot of fun. Whoa, look at that. We just got a major, major uh, bourbon uh, bourbon fund donation from Caleb. Thank you for that, Caleb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate it. But uh, so as I close out, I will say. It's we're coming up on uh, two hours and I can't thank you enough for, for joining me. What a great time and what a what a great whiskey we have found. And um, this um, this Woodenville, you know, I mean, this is a cash strength beauty, cash strength beauty coming out of Washington. And if you are sleeping on this, if you are sleeping on this, you're missing out. You're just straight up missing out. So don't sleep on Woodenville. It is absolutely beautiful. But thank you so much. If you haven't yet, click that like button. Show some support to the channel. Become a subscriber. We'd love to have you here. We have a lot of fun on this channel and a lot of great things coming. Um, I can't wait for you all to see what is ahead. But as we roll into 2021 and more people are getting out and are able to get out, you know, just remember to be safe out there. And this is very important. I had to tell my kid this the other day as I witnessed him licking a handrail. Don't lick handrails. Don't lick trash cans. And remember, vodka sucks unless 
it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.